I don't know if this is true, but I wanted to make sure and, and ask you myself. Sure. The the Bruder film um, right. that shows President Kennedy's assassination. Mm -hmm. Were you the first person to see that video? Uh, I was among the first people to see it. We, that is to say, the CBS News team that I had in Dallas, we were in Dallas to cover the president's visit. Uh, that CBS News team, working with our CBS affiliate in Dallas, KRLD, um, after the assassination, we were looking for anybody, everybody who had any pictures. Remember, this is 1963, and there weren't nearly as many movie cameras around. So naturally, while looking for any pictures, we were especially interested in finding anybody who had film. Mm -hmm. And we did find Mr. Spruger and aided him in getting his uh, film processed. And then after he got it processed, he quite wisely hired a lawyer because he realized he had something valuable. And I was one of uh, three people who, was in, who were invited to the lawyer's office to view the film for the first time. Uh, Mr. Spruder and his lawyer had seen it, but we were the first journalists to see it. Were you also the first person, because I've always thought that Walter Cronkite was the first person to report that John F. Kennedy was killed. I was, I, I've read that you were the first person to report that he was killed. Well, that's true. Um, that, remember this is 1963, um, and Walter Cronkite reported on the air. I reported to Walter Cronkite and to the CBS headquarters in New York. We, did, we confirmed that he was dead. They were almost from the first information. The first bulletins were the president's been shot and possibly killed. But the government, for its own purposes, and he was killed practically instantly. Um, but the government didn't announce it. So about 22 minutes before the government announced it, uh, that uh, I talked to some people at the hospital and uh, several members of our team, particularly the local news director, and talked to some other people and we determined that he was dead. And so on the telephone lines in New York, on the telephone line, not on television, mm -hmm. I said to him, I said, well, you know, do you think he's dead? And I said, yes, he's dead. So they relayed that information to the people broadcasting the studio, which was Walter Cronkite. So you were the first person to relay it to Walter Cronkite, and then he relayed it to, to us. Cool. Yes. Yes. How does that shape your career reporting on that? Well, I think it's fair to say because in those days there were really only two and a half national broadcasting companies. ABC was not fully formed at that time. Uh, so the whole nation was working. So I happened to be the reporter on scene and it was on television. And, and in terms of, I don't like to talk about it in these terms, but in terms of a brand name, sort of emerged after that. Mm -hmm. So in many ways, I wouldn't say it was the making of my career, but my destiny of being there that day was pretty clear. It didn't hurt. Yeah, changed completely. It changed completely. 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 Yeah. But I've always, uh, I thought at the time, and I've thought many times since, I knew we weren't wrong about the president's death. Uh -huh. But in that long 20 or 22 minute period, between the time I told him he was dead, and the time the government broadcast and I found myself thinking, if for any reason he isn't dead, then I'll need another career. Oh, yes, definitely, yeah. <laughs> definitely. So, let me ask you this. You were with CBS for how many years? 44 years. We have a different face at CBS right now. You succeeded Walter Cronkite. I did. And then Katie succeeded you. Uh, that's right. There was an in interim period while they were getting it from him. That's basically true. It goes basically with Ed Murrow to Walter Cronkite, uh, to myself, and then after a fairly short interval, uh, to Ms. Kirk. Yes. So Katie Kirk is there now, right. and Diane Sawyer is at ABC. Their right. Women are <laughs> taking over. Right. Well, I, what, how do you think she's doing? How do you think Katie's doing right now? I think she's doing just fine. I think Diane is doing uh, great as well. That, you know, I'm old enough to remember when there were very few, if any, women correspondents, or never mind anchor people. When I came to CBS News, it might have been short answer that they had one woman correspondent, and NBC News had one woman correspondent. And it was quite a few years before they had more than one. And now we have 
two of the big three anchors. Anchors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quite a change. Yeah. I, I want to ask you this. It's kind of off the cusp. That's right. Are you friends with Connie Chong? Yes. You are? Yes. I saw her on the train not too long ago. She was, she's on the uh, Board of Regents, I think, at the University of Maryland. Uh -huh. And she was on the train to come up to the Board of Regents. And I see her from time to time. Yes, we're friends. Uh -huh. Now, would you, the situation that happened with, uh, at CBS with her and her anchoring and her leaving, is there anything you would have done differently with that? Well, oh, of course, there are always things that you would have done differently. Uh, I'm not sure that it would have turned out differently, uh, but there are all kinds of things that I would have done differently. But Connie and I rarely had any difficulties, whatever. I mean, we worked together five days a week, and it was rare that we had a difference between them. I liked one another before she came to the anchor chair. At that time, I had in my contract that I could approve or disapprove whomever I was going to work with and I approved to her. Uh, we got along fine when she was doing it, and when she left, uh, which was not a happy time for, for us or for her, uh, things were okay. DC Spotlight is an online newspaper, and um, it's a uh, located here in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and we started a little less than a year ago, mm -hmm. and um, I was inspired by you to do this. Well, I, I you. followed your career my I'm entire life. I'm touched by that. Yes. I'm really touched by that.